Afternoon, afternoon, everyone. Um, just one or two house rules, please. Um, if you ask a question, just if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand so that we can bring the mic to you, um, or the speaker will tell us now uh, when he much rather want to yeah. answer and ask questions. I you yeah, because this is an introduction, and. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit and then I'm going to show a few things like just the operators of functions that I just talked about. I will demonstrate and you can ask questions anytime because it's going to be interactive. Otherwise, it, there's not, no, not going to be much learning. So anytime you can raise your hand. I'll, I'll repeat the question so you don't have to wait for the mic and then they will record it. And then also, there's too much people, yeah? So big in nervous. Hulle het gevra, baie mense moet biobab toe gaan gauw. Hulle het gaan kyk daar. <laughs> daar is free plushies, penguins, olifante als. <laughs> daar het een sakker geval vir dit. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, a little bit about myself. I'm Jock Kombrink. And um, I started working for Quant Solutions um, 18 months ago. And... Um, it's there that I basically started to learn databases and Postgres um, in particular. So I'm in no means yeah, an expert. It's just this is something that um, we as a company use a lot, so I had to learn it as, um, yeah, as we develop a lot in the database. <coughs> so don't ask difficult questions, and this is only an introduction. <laughs> just keep that in mind. Talk to me. Whoa. You. Where did this come from? Um, yeah, that's not news. That there was a cable there. No. Okay, but th that laptop doesn't have an HDMI port. What do you have? Um, VGA. <laughs> <laughs> That, okay, that is good. Sorry, man. You don't have anything else? I didn't know it was restricted cable. <laughs> yes, I, I really don't. So, what you are saying is my company... <laughs> You're lying. He's not lying. I, I don't, just don't know how it works. No, it's fine. There is an HDMI port in this laptop that I, that I talked about right now. <laughs> Like I said, it's an introduction. <laughs> okay. Am I almost finished? <laughs> no. Okay, now I can click, yeah. Okay. So, that's everyone's question, or at least I know that was mine in the beginning when I started working there, and... I obviously knew you know a little bit about databases. I didn't know Postgres at all. And then there was these columns. Disclaimer, at first it was called JSON, but same thing, I didn't know what both of them was. Um, we use it all the time. And <laughs> like that guy said, at this point I'm too afraid to ask. So I used it for a long time and just didn't know like, really what, what it is. And um, the essential, uh, yeah, first of all, I... I haven't used databases for a long time, so I don't come from a background where you guys probably used HStore and then, J and then that transformed into JSON. And most people will know that. So I, I know it now, that how it was, but I didn't use it, so I, I, I understand now. And then came JSONB, and that's what we're going to talk about, about the, the um, advantages JSONB brought after that. And basically what it is, binary JSON, <coughs> nothing, nothing special. Um, it was introduced in version 9.4 of Postgres. Started out with you. That's not like. Huh? Started out with um, maybe half of the functionality that we enjoy now as a version 10. Um, version 11 is coming out soon, and nothing, uh, nothing um, changed. Version 10 and 11 uh, r regarding JSONB functions, operators, um, and the creation and processing stuff uh, is exactly the same. Same amount of stuff. Um, First of all, yeah, the why JSONB? So um, a lot of times you want you have 
some data you want to store, uh, properties or settings, attributes of something. Um, and I assume in the past you had to do multiple columns for that. You store them all in that. And then when your data changes, you don't know what to do with the column that's not needed anymore or something like that. And I guess that's how HStore started. And then eventually you needed multi-level um, storing for settings or attributes that can dynamically become anything, right? And, um, and that's why you would use JSONB in the, f in the first place. Oh, why well, you would use JSON in the first place. Um, and JSONB is the same, except for the things I'm going to show you now. The, the only difference between JSON and JSONB is the way they are stored. <clears throat> JSON is stored in its plain text format. So if you have an insert query with your JSON text there, the database takes that JSON text, stores it exactly like that. Nothing changes. The order of the properties are kept the same. Um, if there's white spaces in that text, it will be there. Duplicate keys will not be removed. They will be there. That text is saved as text. And the JSONB, that's where it's different, is stored in its binary representation. So it takes that text, transforms it into its binary rep representation that the database understands. Um, what that causes is it removes it removes white spaces, it will remove duplicate, duplicate keys, and um, it will have its own order. So it doesn't take the text just like that, it transforms it into a binary format. So obviously, like that first bullet point says, JSONB takes more time to build from its input than JSON. So an insert with two of the exact same text strings will take longer for JSONB. You guys understand, just because it transforms it into binary, the other one just inserts it, just like that. Um, JSONB, usually takes more space than JSON, though not always. Um, third bullet, like I said, does not preserve white space, not, does not preserve the order of the object keys, and does not keep duplicate object keys. So it will physically remove them. If, you have, if, if it's in the insert string, it will remove the first one, I think. The last one is kept, yes. It will override the, the first key. Um, and the advantages of why you would rather use that. JSONB operations are significantly faster because it's transformed in at the time of input. All um, subsequent select queries on that is faster. It's already in a binary format that's faster to, to, to call on than the text that first has, has to then parse it and give you the answer. And JSONB supports more advanced indexing and supports easier updates on its column so that we will see later with all of the the functions. So let's yeah, jump. Yeah, this is going to start with a few examples. And the best page for this is that page there at the top. A one page in the Postgres documentation that lists the um, JSONB functions and JSON functions in nice tables broken down into, um, into categories like the operators, then the creation functions, then some processing functions. So literally everything is there that I'm going to tell you about today. I'm going to, uh, yeah, here's a, an example table that we're going to use. Some, some users, there's three users in there. And just <coughs> very simply, um, the, yeah, there's an ID. And I insert into data type of JSONB you can see there. And you can see, yeah, the different, the different people can have different properties already. And th that's, that's the stuff about JSONB. You can, you can store dynamic JSONB in there, change things, attributes you can, you can decide you no longer want and it can disappear from the columns, it can be in previous rows, doesn't matter and that's the dynamic beauty of this thing. Um, yeah, as you can see, I, you can have no, some no, normal text properties there, name Gavin, age, integer as a, a numeric as, as the age there and, and a text array as characteristics and also another JSONB property within JSONB with some extra info. Let's jump into this. Um, select the JSON object field by key. So you saw the data that I just input. If I would run that query, um, it will give me the, the name property, all the values next to the name property of all the, of all the users. And that operator is how you can call of any of the any of those properties, so you can call on name, age, the extra info, or whatever. 
You can also, um, okay, so before I show that one, you can also chain, chain um, JSONB operators. You can, so for example, two of those rows had an extra info key within it, and you can call on the first JSONB with that operator, extra info, and then call another operator on, onto that, you understand. Remember, you can ask questions like that. Just hold time. <laughs> um, okay, wait. No, I did, just didn't mention the array element there. So what I did there, I, I called on the characteristics JSONB array, and I called for the first element of that, and it will return that. But these four, is just, I'm going to show four examples, and then I'm going to show it to you quickly in, the, in PSQL, and we can talk about it then. Um, so if you change that operator with the, with the single arrow to a double arrow, it, it, you can select the exact same property, and all it will do, it, 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 it will not give you the result as JSONB. It will give you the result as text. So from that, obviously, now you cannot chain it. So if I select something as text, then that's the final result. That's the text. You can do text operations on that. But if you want JSONB and you know you're going to ask for another thing within that JSONB, use the JSONB one. And the last one, you can do text again. <clears throat> same with that one. I, so... And, and that illustrates my point. Select the first JSON, the array as JSONB because I know I want an, another thing from it. And then use the JSONB operator again on it, but give me the result as text. <clears throat> Let's, yeah, let me, let me just showcase this to you quickly. How can I make this thing not like that? Okay. Just to give you guys an, an idea, yeah, select, wait, let me, how can I bring this up? Does anyone, any of you know? You can, you can almost move it up. I know you, okay, thank you. I know you can. Okay, so just an, as an example, that's how it will how it will display it for you. So you know, there's a there's a JSON B column called data. You can ask for any property on those three rows with that operator. Um, you can you can ask for it as text. It will bring it back, and that that type there will be text. You can um, also ask for the that extra that that other. JSONB within the JSONB into that, and it will just not error when it's not there. And that's the beauty of it. We'll just return null, and no, yeah, nothing sad is happening, but it will bring, it will bring that back. You guys understand how it works, the operators and stuff, and what we are doing here. Continued. Um, okay, this is yeah some some more advanced stuff. So select the JSONB object at a specified path. That operator there with the hash and double arrow is what you will use for that. And let's take that example that you can see there, the first one for example. Select data and then you provide it a path. You say and and give me the the stuff at extra info married as marriage date from users. And again, it won't error. Like one of the rows won't have it, or multiple rows in a bigger DB, and it will just return nothing. Like there's nothing at that path for that rows, and that's that's great. Um, and also with the 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 path that it that it says you must specify there can also um, pertain to to arrays. So you can say give me characteristics at number two. This operator here with the at sign. With the at sign, uh, you can use it both ways. Um, it's basically, does the left JSON contain the right JSON at the top level? Um, if, the at, if the at is this way around, yeah, like, like I have here in the, in the example, um, it's, does the left contain this at the right? And I've constructed that now. And that, for example, will return true for one of the rows and false for all of the other, other rows. So. Just as an example, it's, it's sort of the same as that one. You can do that one at the top. Select all from users where that, that, that equals that. And that will return the same result 
uh, for now. The difference being, as I will tell you right at the end, just some short info there about indexing. This contains operator can hit indexes um, if you are going to index your whole JSON-B column. And that's an important part to speed up. Because that first one will be slowish, if there's no indexes, and that contains one will then be a, way, a, a lot faster, yeah, way better. Uh, the containment operators can also be used for arrays. So you can bore into the JSONB, call on characteristics, and, and then it will, the results it will be the arrays, and you can ask that array, do you contain semi-loyal? And it will return true or false, the, yeah, depending on. Let me... Illustrate that for you. Control L, smooth. <laughs> yeah. Why is it not making? Okay, it's making that thing. Uh, so let's see, I'll say the, the example that I, that I showed you. As you can see, so that operator different than the, than the dash, than the dash arrow, um, that's just asking for a single key, like give me this key. That hash, hash arrow, um, you can give it a path, you can give it a, obviously a longer path, and it will go into it, and at any point, if it doesn't get that key, the answer is obviously null, as a, that third record shows. You guys got it? Now, let me, if I can copy this, that will be better. That thing I talked about, uh, the, that you can, JSON -B, uh, int, you can get the JSON B result um, of the array back and then ask it, do you contain semi -loyal? And Give me all the rows where that's true, and that will return that one. You guys must stop me if you have any questions, right? If you want to see some examples that I'm not showing, we can... You can type anything. You you know the data set. If you want, the, if you have a question, I can, I can question it. Yes. Previous slide. Yes. Okay. Oh, um, let's on, do that. On the last line, um, you're what? using dash arrow to get to characteristics. Um, can you also use the the hash arrow? the path uh, option to get um, that first term that, you, that you're checking yes, for? Yes, I think that will. Okay, so just yeah, important. I'm going to check now. I think it, it, it does because I think most of those operators return JSONB and accept those double arrows things. So with the chaining, obviously, yeah, you, obviously you obviously need JSONB to call another JSONB operator on it. As this is a JSONB operator, you need to make sure that's JSONB. And I think all those operators return JSONB. So, but, but we are going to check it now, because that is what we are here for. Okay, so there it is. So you, you provided it a path there. It's only one key, but obviously you will give a longer path and you will say, okay, at that path, I know there's an array. In some records, does it need to be, does that array contain that value, for example? And that's the sort of stuff you can do. Yes, exactly. Very cool. See, guys, that's like good questions. Then we all, then we all learn, learn something. Um, okay, so these are some of the cool operators. Um, question mark. 
does this string exist as a top level key within this JSON value to the left? Um, I'll now explain the question mark with the, with the pipe and the question mark with the, with the and. Um, so basically this will say select all from users where data contains this key. So now it's not so much about values anymore. You're, you're asking the rows, who of you have this key, extra info? And we'll return, um, yeah, okay, well that will return the rows that is true or false. The question mark with the pipe basically says where data contains some of these keys, and the question mark and says where, question, where data contains all of these keys. And that's the cool thing, you can then provide it an array. The, the um, solo question mark there takes one key, and the other two operators, you can give it an array with the one asking, do you have some of them, at least one of them, other one, all of them. <clears throat> the double pipe operator um, concatenates two JSONB values into a new JSONB value. Um, so as you can see, that I can take da data, and if I, now, if I will now select that, that old JSONB structure will be concatenated into that JSONB at the top level. Just uh, a note on that concatenation, it will always be top level, and it won't, it won't go deeper. If, if a key on this level, so if I have an even more extra info key already in data, it will override the whole thing. Um, if that initial even more extra info has a lot of keys or more layers, that whole thing will be overwritten with one key, number of pets, three. So I don't know if that's as important. That's all the information that was already there. You might just not write the number of bits in there. It's fine. Um, then this, yeah, the, the minus or single dash, um, that can del delete a key value pair from a JSONB object. The, the, the dash, you can just give one key and it will delete that value from the top level of data. Um, you can obviously go into data and delete something from there as well, obviously, as so long as you have a JSONB value at the end, you can call another JSONB operator on it. Um, same with the array, you can delete the, the first record from an array. Um, yeah, and that hash dash, you can again give a path that looks the same as we saw previously with the hash arrow. You can delete to a path, and if it finds something there, it will delete it. Okay, just disclaimer, there are a lot of JSONB creation functions and processing functions. I haven't listed all of them. I, I've listed like a, uh, actually a very few of them that, that, that we have used and that I've, um, yeah, no, I found um, helpful over the years. Uh, no, wait, let's stop there. Over the months. That, that, <laughs> remember, this is an introduction. <laughs> Um, JSONB array elements and JSONB array elements text. So that's the same thing. One returns the, the elements as text, the other one as JSONB. And you can, say, you can see that, so I, I give that function, JSONB array elements text, I give that function data characteristics. And yeah, so that function expects an array and it will go through every record and unpack that array for you and give you the single result. So give you all the values of the arrays. So obviously, if I run that now, I will, I will get some duplicate. Do I, did I have duplicate um, characteristics? Can't remember. But if you have, it will unpack the whole thing. And then with that, you can do a, this, you can do a distinct on that later, or just like, yeah, do this unique on that, and ask how many characteristics are there overall, because it will unpack that whole array for you. I, th I feel I need to show it quickly, maybe. I'm not getting my words to you. Um. That's not the function. Don't type that. <clears throat> Uh, 
Okay. So as an example. So that's not useful in this example now, but you cannot do something with that. You are now having the right, the ID, is, it, it says there, so these are the two characteristics from user one, the two from two, and the three characteristics from user three. It will just unpack any array for you, and you can then do something with that, which is just cool. I, you know, that's just, there has been some use cases for us in the, in the past with this. I cannot diverge it, divulge that information, but, but believe me. Then, the coolest one, JSONB set, where you can update into any, into any level or layer, any key, any property of a JSONB value. So, for example, if I wanted to update the age property of a user, all the users, I don't know, you can have anywhere close there, to 18. I can do it like that. You, up, you update user set data equals. Then you use the JSONB set function. You give, uh, you give an original JSONB object there, and it will update that object with that key equal to that third value. So take data, update the key age to 18, and set that equal to, that, to data. Everyone got that? So you, and and this, this, um, this path that you give here, you can obviously make it longer, like go deeper change a value deeper into more JSONB, JSONB levels. Um, okay, so yeah, yes, I just had an example. So what I will do here is, I, let's say for example, so age, you, you guys saw age was on, on the top level, and you had an extra info, JSONB, object within that, the, your original JSONB column, and you decide for some reason that the age property must move into extra info. It must also be there where married, marriage date was or something. And this is, some, some, uh, this is like an example how you can do that. You can, that is now a select query, so that's not the update, but just uh, as an example. So I'm going to show you this, and you will see what I mean when I type it. It will make more sense. No, that's not. My thing's already there. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm going to do this uh, somewhere. By forbot. That's a word. Um, so just what I'm doing is, you saw the third record didn't have an extra info JSONB property, you guys remember that. So when I would have wanted to update the extra info JSONB property, in, like in the previous command, it would, it would do it for the records that it can, and then for that third record, it would just not have done it, because there is no extra info property. And I told JSONB set, go to this path, and then update this property. Go to, go to data, extra info, update age two. And at extra info, it would just say, no, there's no such thing. I have nothing to update. And that third record would not have updated. And I noticed that afterwards, obviously. But you should notice this beforehand. And then when you know you're going to do something in that JSONB property, create that property for all records first, like, like so. And then you can move on so that you don't uh, make mistakes. OK. That is now just a select to show you, so it didn't actually obviously update the thing, but it, it illustrates the same point. You can just obviously take that and do it for the update. So <clears throat> basically it says select, and I call the JSONB set function. Remember, I give it, I give it a, the original JSONB object. I say go to, and that's a path, extra info, then age, and set it equal to this third value. And that is now not an hard coded 18 or something, and that I now select from that user's property that I must have at the top level of the JSONB column. And you can set that into extra info. And that's then what it will look like. You guys understand. So I, I basically queried this and inserted it here in extra info. This one only has age. This one kept the married date of, and has age. You guys understand. 
and then, as we know, because uh, we talked about the, the, the delete operators, now you will go and delete. So in, a, in your little script where you decided we're going to do this, now you can delete the original age property, and you will have the same info, and it will look different. And that's the beauty of the JSONB column, the dynamic moving around of properties. You can decide you don't want properties anymore. So, but I mean, perfect for for um, settings, like that's what we use it the most for. Um, or just data that you know is going to change a lot. You, you can't make columns for it because, I mean, you're going to have schema updates for the rest of your life, and it's just not going to be fun. Like I said, I haven't dealt with that because I you know, started with this, <laughs> but I imagine it's not going to be fun. Um, okay, that's all the previous. Okay, then I have one minute left, but this is the last slide that's just touching on indexing and why JSONB is lacking for that. Um, you, can, you can obviously have your normal B tree indexing as, as usual, and you can see how, how I define it there, and you can call it on a, on a single property only, and you can say, so index for me, data, text value, age, but give it as int. And, but that will only work then when you ask for that for age as int. That will only work for that. No, no other um, property in that JSONB thing that you ask for later. So let's, for example, you ask for the extra info or the characteristics. That won't be indexed, obviously, because that's how the index looks. And that's where these two guys come in. JSON ops, JSONB path ops. <clears throat> those two, I don't know a lot of detail, but those two are different, um, and, and this paragraph explains it better are different in the, in the way how they handle and how much how they handle the, yeah, the index and how, how the different, um, how many operators you get on them. The, the default index, that's, that's the JSON ops, creates an index for every key and value in the JSON. So that thing, yeah, like that's one key up there, data age. Just um, yeah, to make it clear, JSON ops and JSONB path ops, you, you define it on the whole column. So that's an index on the column and you say index this JSONB column and then you can go. So the default one creates an index item for every key and value in the JSON, while the JSONB path ops creates a hash of the keys leading to up to a value, um, and the value itself, and that's a lot more compact and faster um, to process than the more complex default. The, um, the default, and yeah, it says there on, at the bottom, the default does offer more operations at the cost of consuming more space. So the default JSON ops, um, you can have a select query or a where or something with, with all five of those operators, both the containment operators, the left, the left container and the right container operators, and the three exist, the existing um, operators. The, does this key exist? Does some of these keys, keys exist? Do all of these keys exist? The JSONB path ops has only the containment operators. So that's a trade-off you, you have to decide for yourself. Um, in, in the way they are stored, the JSON ops obviously takes a lot more space because it has to uh, um, accompany those five operators and JSONB path ops, only the two containment operators. And I mean, that's amazing in a JSONB field, uh, JSONB column that you can have all these different values. Um, I mean, most of the records don't even look the same. It, it can, sometimes it has the same properties, sometimes not, and you can index that and it will be blazingly fast if you do um, something where you can do a containment, like ask where is Mary, like I showed you the one example, where is extra info married this date? And when you do that with the containment operator, that's indexed. When you don't bore down with the, I mean, you, rem you guys remember with the JSONB operators, like when you, don't, when you don't do this, that gives you the same result, but when you rather do this, and that's indexed, and that can be just as fast as a query on a column. I think the index was the last slide. Yes. OK, these, these things. You must go to those two websites. You can come and get it by me afterwards. I can just make it big again for you. That first one, devins.io, PostgreSQL, JSON. That's an exceptional page that shows all these operators Almost the same as the, the, the official Postgres one, just a little bit cooler. Um, I mean, it just looks better, and it's, 
it's, it's more, more grouped, smaller little tables, and that have as little examples. Everything is there. So, like, I mean, when, when, when I work on the DB and I have to write some queries, I always have one of those pages open because you can't remember all the functions, and there's a, and there's a lot of them. So definitely use that. My time is up. Um, is there any questions? Yes. This is there to compete with Mongo. Say again? The, the JSONB, the whole storage of JSON documents within Postgres, yes. is there to compete with Mongo. It, yes, exactly yeah, like that. And, and I don't know all the details, yeah, sure. but, I, but apparently the, the JSONB document storage is right on par with Mongo. So it the makes B Mongo, B MongoDB obsolete yeah. when they came out with that. That's what I. That's what I hear. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's going yes. running a little bit before the. Yeah. But I just wanted to say, just one, one, one quick te technical question, if you don't know. Can you join? I mean, in Mongo, one of the things you cannot do is join two collections together. Yes, you can if you go through the route, sure. But yes. you can't. You can't do it a la SQL. So, can I use SQL against BSON to join two? Let's call them te BSON tables together, for want of a better word. You know. So can I use SQ I'm using SQL to, to an extent there. Yes. What I'm saying is I have two, what would Mongo be called containers? What okay. Would be in normal Postgres or Oracle be called tables. Okay. Okay. Now obviously in a normal RDBMS I can I can join two tables. Yes. In Mongo I cannot join two containers with the intrinsic. Oh. Ca can I do it? I did not even know. If I understand correctly, then yes. Okay. The basic answer is you can yeah oh, that, that join multiple. Columns of JSON be next to each other. No, no, no. Go you, into them. I'm, I'm, don't worry. It's not, not, not okay. I, I'll, I, I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I'll. I don't I'll know. Go and look it up. Yes. <laughs> it's fine. Great. Thanks. I think I've answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To what's a what's the thing is a ATDDL? Yeah, the, the, the auto definition oh, of the table itself. In other words, can you create dynamically from columns a Collapse it into one JSON column, and vice versa. Yes. Wow. Um, okay. So I don't obviously have the, all the things in my slides. Like I said, there are a lot of functions. Okay. I'm going to quickly. So these I all add because these are the basic ones that, that we know. Those operators up top there. These operators, everyone? OK. Here, we start with the creation functions. And you can, for example, take a row and two JSON it. You can take arrays, make a JSON object out of that. Take key value pairs, make a JSON out of that. Anything. And so th that's some more advanced functions there. It's not, it's not really difficult. That, that's, for example, something I expect that you can do. You can, for example, decide these five columns now, I want one column. And that's what, exactly what this is for. And you can say, make this, make, take these five columns, take their values, give value, pair them to JSON, put them in that row, delete these columns. And now you're better off. Because now you have JSON B. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an offense. And now, it's <laughs> now you have JSON B. It's just as fast as the columns, and it can change dynamically. And you can remove keys now. Doesn't matter. And that's that's exactly what that's exactly what it does. Okay, I'm finished. But let me just show you how much things there are. Look at all these JSON processing functions. <laughs> Look at all these JSON processing functions. I, I I haven't named all of them. Obviously, I named the array elements and the JSONB set. That's the most important one. But there's a lot, and they get they are, some of them are difficult, some of them easy. But you keep this open while you work. Huh? What funny website? Yeah, let me let me website can check. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.